What's up guys, welcome back to Monster Monday. Today's episode, continuing the Giant series, and I'm gonna be talking about Stone Giants. All right guys, so Stone Giants are a little bit tricky, I'm gonna be honest with you. Because they're neutral, they're purely neutral, and for the most part, they're only gonna be found underground. I feel like stone giants are kind of the most limited in terms of giants that you can actually use. So I had a really hard time coming up with ways to kind of use them creatively in the ways that I normally do and to think outside of the box, but I'm gonna share some ideas with you, okay? But first of all, let me give you an overview about what stone giants are and how they live. So as I said, stone giants, they're neutral. They live underground. They live almost exclusively underground. Their whole world happens underground. Now, if you're using the underdark setting, this might be a great thing. If you have frequent adventures underground into deep, dark caverns, you might have stone giants be able to drop in very easily, okay? Um, they're less commonly found uh, above the surface. And part of that is because the stone giant culture views everything that is above the surface as almost like a dream world uh, where, you know, the, 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 the sky, you know, and, and everything uh, on the surface is almost like not even real or doesn't matter. So culturally that, that kind of puts it into a strange thing. So as a DM, I started thinking like, well, how could I use stone giants? And, and the obvious thing is, is you're on a dungeon crawl and that dungeon crawl somehow leads you into um, an area where stone giants live and, and you find their community, okay? Now they're neutral. So there's a couple different ways to approach this. I started to think about what are the motivations? Why would a party go into an area where there are stone giants? Because they're not solitary. They live in communities. So why would you go to an area where there are a bunch of stone giants? Well. Maybe there needs to be a reason for that. Maybe it's not just like you're walking through a dungeon and you come to this big, large complex with um, 30 foot tall ceilings and really ornate architecture and carvings. Oh, stone giants. Okay, that's one thing. Obviously, you could just make it a part of a dungeon. You can make it a part of a cavern crawl. But I, th I started to think about like, why would a party specifically go seek out this? Well, so stone giants are master craftsmen. They're artists with stonework. And at the most powerful and highest levels, stone giants can imbue magic upon the runes of stonework. So maybe there's some kind of reason for this in your campaign for why a party would need to go find stone giants. And maybe that has to do with that lore and that craftsmanship. Maybe there's something specific that your party needs to, to have made that only the stone giants can make. So I started thinking in this vein, and I was like, oh, you know what, this could be kind of cool, right? Maybe there's a big bad guy in your campaign, some powerful magical wizard or something who's done something really bad. Maybe it was like a ritual that has caused some bad monsters to come through, uh, you know, or to, to bring the dead around, and not just like zombies and skeletons, like powerful dead, undead creatures vampires, whatever, right? Or maybe uh, this powerful bad wizard has created an open portal that is de you know, allowing demons to flow through to your, your region, your setting, something like that, right? And the only way to close the portal or to dispel the ritual of whatever the evil bad wizard had done was to make a emblem of elemental protection. I just made that up but whatever, to make some magical stone disc, or maybe it's a stone shield, or maybe it's a stone carved uh, statue, right? And this has imbued with divine giant runes that have the ability to cancel out the portal, right? And close off the demon portal or to stop the undead from rising. So in other words, I started thinking about it from like a story perspective and maybe if there was a need for the giant's specific craftsmanship to, to be able to stop an evil, right? So your party now has gone because they have a reason to find the stone giants, but now they get to the stone giants. The stone giants are neutral. 
they're not evil, but at the same time, like they don't want a bunch of meddlers in their domain, you know? So maybe the stone giants are willing to be, you know, flexible and negotiate if the party approaches it respectfully and, and they communicate the importance or the need for whatever it is that they need the giants to do. Maybe the giants are like, hey, you know what? We need something too. We'll do this for you, but first we want you to go do this, this, and that. And maybe the stone giants have some underground enemies who are causing them problems. Uh, now these could be monster kind of enemies, like a purple worm or something, or it could be um, other underground dwellers, right? Any of the underdark or underground subterranean creatures, right? So this creates like multiple adventures to kind of seal the deal with the giants, with the stone giants. And then, you know, when the party is done with those things, the stone giants are like, ah, we have crafted the discus of blah, 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 you know, and, and they have this cool ornate stone uh, thing that they've crafted with like runes on it that are magically imbued. And now the party has this thing and now they can go, you know, stop the plans of the evil wizard, bad guy, necromancer or whatever, demon summoner. So that, that kind of lends itself to a story progression. But then I thought, well, you know, let's have multiple options. Let's say that your lower level party happens to be on a dungeon crawl and you get the really eager member of the party who's like, I search for traps, I search for secret doors in like every room. Maybe give them a reward. And maybe that reward is they find a, a secret passageway that leads to an old stone giant uh, underground dwelling, right? And maybe there are a few stone giants who are there who are like the elders and the master craftsmen, but they are like busy, you know, working on their stone carvings and their master craft work. And instead the party comes along to Bumbo. And Bumbo is just basically, he's like an unskilled stone giant, right? And in stone giant community, like not being good at your art of, of stonework and, and stone carving is kind of like, like you're a lower rung stone giant now and they just send you to like do guard duty. So the party comes across Bumbo and Bumbo's like kind of bummed out and he's, you know, he's, he's like has like low self-esteem um, and maybe he's like quick to anger, you know, but if the party's nice to him and stuff, Bumbo will like tell the party about, you know, Oh yeah, well the elders over there, they can, you know, they have, uh, they're working on a great project and blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of create like a, a funny NPC stone giant who is, is kind of like a liaison between the party and the more like solid stone giants with their crafts and their works. Maybe you have an ambitious party who's a little bit murder hobo-y or they just want to steal cool things, right? And they can manipulate Bumbo into revealing like where the vault is and like, or maybe you let Bumbo slip that and be like, Bumbo's never been able to go to the vault. The masters won't let Bumbo go there. That's where all the priceless works of art are kept. You know, ting. So like your, your feverous, you know, murder hobo -y party might be like, yeah, let's go raid the vault, dude, treasure, right? So. I, I could see it working in a couple different ways. And that could be low level, it could be mid level. Um, higher level, you know, for stone giants, I think becomes more of a conflict kind of thing. So, it, and, and this is where you could bring stone giants out of the underworld, underground, subterranean kind of setting. But suppose that you have like a high level party and there's, there's a really big intense conflict going on in your campaign, perhaps, someone um, of a higher power might have commanded these stone giants to come and serve in their army against their foes. So it could be any faction. It could be good guys, bad guys, neutral factions, selfish factions, whatever factions are at war or in conflict within your campaign setting could have conceivably either hired the stone giants to be part of their army or kind of manipulated them or forced them or blackmailed them into doing this, right? So the stone giants could be bad guys, right? They could just be like out on, like we've gone to the surface because this is the dream world and nothing matters and we're just going to destroy and kill and take whatever we want and then go back underground and work on our art. 
um, that could happen, you know, like a, a situation where the stone giants have just decided to go do that. Or like I said, you could look at the politics that are going on in your campaign and the different conflicts in between factions or individuals and say like, hmm, maybe someone has manipulated these stone giants into serving them. And now the stone giants may be a little bit more sympathetic because maybe they didn't have a choice. Maybe they just had to go do this because such and such bad guy or such and such good guy has said to them like, if you don't do this, we will do X, Y, Z bad things to you or to your people, or we will destroy your home, you know, whatever it is. That kind of sounds like a bad guy thing to do. But the point is, is that like the stone giants could be allies recruited or hired by some faction or even by your party, or they could be, you know, kind of bad guys or in league with bad guys, whether they like it or not, and being manipulated into doing the bidding of the bad guys. That's, I guess the redeeming thing about them being so very neutral and kind of staying out of what happens above in the surface world is that you can use them as you need to, okay? And I think that kind of third approach of considering them kind of like mercenaries is yet another way where you could use stone giants creatively and fit them into your campaign world. I think overall to kind of wrap this up, stone giants might be for me, the hardest to consider how to use. Even though it seems pretty simple to use them, I think to use them creatively and to integrate them into your campaign does take a little bit of work. It does take a little bit of thinking. And think about motivations, you know, thinking about why they would do what they're doing or why they wouldn't do what they're not doing. So kind of thinking about how a party approaches them, how a party and why a party would approach them, or how stone giants would get involved in your campaign is all important. But the biggest kind of overarching concept is don't change your campaign to fit stone giants in it. Think about how stone giants can fit into your campaign. And that's about it for this episode. So before I wrap it up, please like, subscribe, click on that notifications bell, and of course, share the video if you found it helpful. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like what I had to say and share your information in the comments below. If you're a DM who has used stone giants, tell us the story of how you use them. If you're a player who has encountered stone giants, share that as well because I love to read those comments and so does everyone else in the community. We'll see you on the next episode. Hello mate, thanks for watching all the videos, make sure that you look up there and subscribe and don't forget to check out some of the other videos like them up there or those down there, we'll see you next time.